Imagine getting into an argument with a fellow co-worker, and afterwards the co-worker gets a shotgun, murders your friend, then tries to murder you. Imagine just stopping by a random gas station while on a road trip to meet friends and then running into a serial killer with a shotgun, or try to imagine you're sleeping on a bench and suddenly you are shot multiple times. This is the case of Quincy Allen, the man who wanted to teach himself to be a serial killer. Quincy Allen was born on November 7, 1979. He was sent to federal prison after stealing a car. This is where he got his inspiration to become a serial killer. While in prison, he was offered a job as a hitman for the mafia by a fellow inmate. This is when Quincy decided to go on his crime spree. He bought a shotgun and decided he would practice for his upcoming job as a hitman by killing as many people as he could. On July 7, 2002, Quincy decided he would practice using his shotgun when he observed 51-year-old James White, a homeless man, sleeping on a bench at Finlay Park in Columbia, South Carolina. He decided to shoot White twice while he was sleeping. Just three days later on July 10, 2002, Quincy would strike again. Quincy used his sawed-off shotgun to murder 45-year-old Dale LeVon Hall near Columbia I-77 rest stop. He shot Hall in the head, stomach, face, and legs. He then drove to a truck stop nearby to purchase a can of gasoline then returned to the body. After dousing it with the gasoline, he set the body on fire. The body was discovered when two people noticed a fire burning on the side of the road and notified authorities. After firefighters arrived, they made the gruesome discovery. This was not just a random fire on the side of the road, it was the body of a nude woman who had been shot multiple times then set on fire. The body would later be identified as Dale Levon Hall when an employee from the sheriff's office realized that the description of the victim matched his missing relative. When investigators spoke to the family, they learned that Hall was a nurse. After conducting a criminal record search on the victim, the police discovered that she did sex work. Five days after Hall's murder, police received a call from a sex worker that would provide a possible clue to who Hall's killer was. The sex worker described a disturbing encounter with a client. She stated that she got into a car with a possible customer and discussed the terms for their sexual encounter. When the negotiations were over, the customer started to remove his shirt which is when she observed the word serial killer written across his stomach. This frightened her and caused her to flee the vehicle. Looking at the similarities in the murder of 45-year-old Dale Hall and the shooting of 51-year-old James White, investigators believed both cases to be related. On August 8, 2002, Quincy Allen would strike yet again. Quincy was at work at Texas Roadhouse on August 8 when he got into an altercation with his co-worker, Brian Marquis. Quincy was bothering Marquis's pregnant girlfriend who was also an employee at the Texas Roadhouse. When she requested that he leaves her alone, he threatened to hit her so hard that she loses her baby. Understandably, this upset her boyfriend Marquis who then confronted Quincy. Both employees were asked to leave by the manager and this is when Quincy put his deadly plan into action. Marquis got into the car with another employee, Jedediah Har, and they both started to drive away from the restaurant. Witnesses reported seeing Quincy remove a shotgun from his trunk and fire it at the car with both Marquis and Jedediah. Unfortunately, Jedediah was shot in the head and killed. Marquis, who witnessed the shooting, fled from the vehicle into a nearby gas station to get help. I need you to call the police. Oh my gosh, am I bleeding? Am I bleeding? Marquis expressed that someone was trying to kill him. Thankfully, the gas station attendant Roberta Harrison acted quickly and hid Marquis in the store's cooler. Allen later walked into the gas station looking to find and kill Marquis, but Roberta convinced him that nobody was there, and then he left. Thank God for Roberta, she saved Marquis's life. Just four days later on August 12, Quincy would resume his killing spree. He stopped at a gas station in Dobson, North Carolina, where he would meet gas station attendant Richard Hawks. After making a purchase at the gas station, Quincy went to his car to retrieve his shotgun, and while Mr. Hawk's back was turned, Quincy shot and killed him. Quincy then walked behind the counter to try to open the cash register, and that is when an unsuspecting customer walked in. Robert Rausch, a 29-year-old teacher from Lancaster, Ohio, was stopping by the gas station on his way to visit friends in another state. When he walked into the gas station, Quincy raised the shotgun and shot Mr. Rausch in the stomach, he then took his wallet and keys then shot Mr. Roush in the head. As one last final cruel act, before leaving the gas station, Quincy looked into the surveillance camera and stuck out his tongue and smeared the blood of his victim on the camera. It was as if he was saying catch me if you can. 
Quincy obviously didn't fear being caught. He wanted people to know he was responsible for these crimes. He even used Mr. Roush's phone to call and brag to his friends about the murders that he just committed and he told them he has a hit list and that he wanted to become a serial killer. Disturbed by this information, these people started to call the sheriff's office. One of his female friends even recorded him describing the details of the murders. He never turned around. I just shot him in the back, he bragged about the murder of Hawks. This is going to be really gory, but could you look at the inside of someone's head without puking, he asked. By this time, authorities knew they were dealing with a very dangerous man and they knew they needed to catch him soon before he committed more murders. The police caught a break when Quincy used Roush's credit card in Texas. They spotted him sleeping in the vehicle he stole from his victim Mr. Roush. He was arrested and later admitted to all of his crimes and was subsequently sentenced to death. Our thoughts and prayers are with all of the victims. We will see you in the next video.